So, <laughs> thank you for tuning in to DBYT Podcast. I'm Taisha, and today we have a special guest. I'm Zakiria. You heard the name. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? You know, I'm chilling. I got my little spicy mommy outfit on yes. today. Outfit is very spicy. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I had to come <laughs> okay. out and show out for the one time at the yes. lake. Love the chain. This, y'all see her chain? You love my chain? It's so pretty. It's say Taisha, because yeah. y'all know the name. Yeah. All right, so today we're going to get into the bonds beyond measure, a.k.a. friendships. So the first thing we need to talk about, what qualities does a good friend have? <laughs> okay um yeah, yeah we just gonna jump right into it get y'all real mm-hmm. i think the most important one for me is loyalty and boundaries okay it has to be boundaries in the friendship for me loyalty and boundaries are my top two those are my top two for one loyalty that lets me know that no matter what you got my back yeah you will never do any you will never cross me or double cross me and boundaries I respect your boundaries. You respect my boundaries. When it comes to a lot of things, but I feel like there has to be a, the, a discussion that you would need to have with your friend for y'all to know, like, how the friendship is going to go. And I'm big on observing people. So I could kind of pick up on boundaries without a person actually having to tell me, like, okay, it, these are my boundaries, X, Y, Z, right. whatever. And I watch people, too. Their loyalty with other people, that lets me know. And how they carry themselves. Everything that I need to know. Yeah. Everything that I need to know. I feel like in uh I feel like people need to be consistent. And 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 what I mean by that, it's not saying that you have to be happy and go lucky all the time. But because everybody go through a storm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But let me know. You don't have to tell me what your storm consists of. Yeah. But a simple, hey Taisha, I'm going through something. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. But I am gonna be distant and I'm gonna be worried about myself. See, with that, I have a I have a bad habit of doing that. I'm the type of person when I'm going through things like I go so, I go mute, mm. and that's something I've been working on because my friends sometimes would feel like, oh, she acting funny or like what's up with her or X Y and Z. Like for instance, um, maybe like two weeks ago, me and one of my friends like we go out, we have fun, whatever, whatever. But when I get in that mode where I'm focused and I'm locked in, I'm really focused and locked in. And I feel like that's not something that I should have to explain to somebody, you know. But it made her feel some type of way. So I had to tell her, like, well, the way she was acting, I literally had to sit down with her and tell her, like, look, it ain't, it's nothing that you did. Yeah. But I'm going through my own thing right now. I'm trying to get my finances in order. I'm a mom before anything. So, you know. Yeah. And it's, it does get different when you start adding different components to your yeah, life. Yeah, we, we just got to put this, this shit to a halt right now. Can I go? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we, we just got to put everything that we're doing. But I feel like with her, too, you got a lot of stuff going on. Just from what I'm observing, you yeah. got a lot of stuff going on. And I feel like you need to focus. All your adults are not in a row. Partying every day. Worrying about relationships. You know, she's a mother, too. So, and, I, and I've never been the one, oh, you're a bad mom, whatever. Because I really feel like, well, let me stop mine. It is some bad moms in this world. <laughs> but I don't think that my friend is a bad mom. Yeah. But I feel like her priorities get fucked up a little bit. Also, with her dealing with her own mental issues of whatever she, battle, battle she's battling. You know, I try to keep her on track. But sometimes I might come off like, bossy or mother like bitchy like <laughs> she probably like bitch who the fuck you think you talking to but it's just because that i i care and i want to see her thrive but it's like i can't make her get it because she gotta go through her own journey right but i'm still gonna tell you because it might click it might not click today but it might click tomorrow yeah. so you know i'm gonna tell you but i feel like okay we're gonna touch back a little bit on the friend side when when people do go radio silent, sometimes it might, like, I have abandonment issues. I'm, I'm going to say straight up. So when people do that to me, I, I just feel like, did I do something? And even if I didn't do something, I'm like, I worry so much about my friends at times that it's like, man, I hope they okay. I can relate to that, too, because 
I do it to people, but I don't want people to do it to me. <laughs> and that's something that, I, that I'm working on, too. Yeah. Something that I'm definitely working on. This year, 2024, has been, what we what this is, May? Yeah. I have been learning a lot of things about myself and my mental health and my habits, my attitude. I'm a piece of work. So, <laughs> <laughs> earlier we were talking about spirituality and how do you feel like that comes into play with your friendships? Like, do you have, do you think it impacts it in any way? Mm, no, not really. I'm um, the type of person where I try to let people, whatever they believe in, that's on that's them. That's on them. Because it, it, it honestly don't have, no, as long as it's not no satanic crazy <laughs> shit, then that's cool. But whatever they believe in, like what they go off of, then that's on them. But I feel like I attract people that's attracted to the same things that I'm attracted to. Mm-hmm. So that that really works out. I've never had that problem before. So, you know. So you believe in law of attraction? Yes, I do. I I do. I do. And when I do some shit, I'm like, mm, I don't think this is me. I start looking at everybody around me, mm-hmm. trying to see which one of y'all done got this from because I don't do stuff like I don't like normally this. do that. It's yeah. like. And I'm huge on you are a reflection of who you hang around. Yeah, you are definitely a product of and your environment. That's why I be on my friends' ass because I'm like, we products of each other. So everybody need to be on their P's and Q's when it comes to a lot of things. Like when my friends do stuff, when it be like publicly, I be like, now why you do that? Like, Come on, dog. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. But I never do any. I never. No, I don't humiliate her. I, I deliver things to her in a way where it's like, you know, I'm still stern, but it's kind of like my baby almost too. Yeah. Because I don't want her to feel like I'm bashing her or I'm judging her or, but we're a reflection of each other. Like when you do things or if you do something crazy and people like, that's what's a face friend or that's the type of shit they all do. And no, it's not. Because they, that, my, that mentality of birds of a feather flock, flock together. together. Like it's like, what are your friends a hoe? No, everybody. It ain't all five of us hoes. Yeah. No. Like, oh, y'all associated with each other. So, what makes y'all be friends if that's not what the kind of What she do that? with her vagina? Is, uh, it's her. Nothing to do with me. That's, oh, she. Not mine. So right. I just try to just. I try to keep everybody. I feel like I'm the mother friend of the group. Right. I keep everybody level level headed. But I feel like that's the cancer in me, too. I'm very controlling. I'm working on that. Because I used to always want to control things. And I'm learning to stop. I only control what I can yeah. at this point. And I've become I've become a lot better with that. And life has become a lot easier for me once I just let go and let people be them for who they are. Still, I'm, I might check you on something that you did that made me like made me be like, but at the end of the day, you're still your own person. You're going to make whatever decision you want to make because you're an adult. So what is a core memory from one of your childhood friends or a friendship from your childhood that's like, impacted you and made like gave you a, a value or a characteristic that you carry today Ooh. um can it be like traumatic but it turned out good yes <laughs> okay i have a friend um named liz and we met in third grade at mckeeping land and we, we was friend we was friends throughout high school middle school elementary school mm-hmm. in fifth grade we went to the union and you know how little girls be? They get in these cliques and all that yapping. Yeah. So somehow, somewhere, I don't, I don't really remember the details of it, but somehow, some way, me and Liz became at odds with each other, and we went in the bathroom. And my friend, my friend, she's a, she's a Mexican. Y'all know Mexicans are feisty, they feisty as fuck. So she's not like, and she's not your typical like, like. Her personality is just like mine. That's yeah. what I love about her, too. So we go in the bathroom, and she's just yapping, talking shit, yapping, yapping, yapping. And me, I'm so sensitive to the point where it was really like, you know, I really don't want to have to do this with you, but yeah. I'm not finna let nobody keep on bully me either type of shit. Like, you're not right. finna, and, I, and I'm in my feelings about it, too. And it's so crazy because I was so young, but I still felt this deeply about this. I'm in my feelings about it, too, because I'm like, damn, we best friends, and... You know, you let he say, she say, come in between of what you really know that we are. Yeah. So she's in the bathroom yapping, 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 yapping. I don't know. I should have never put my hands on her. But I hit her <laughs> in the bathroom. I hit her, and we got to fighting or whatever. We go to the office. They call our mom. Yeah. 
I'm like, why the fuck y'all gonna do that? But they call our moms, and both of our um, moms come up to the school, and both of our moms yelled at both of us. They was just like, I'm so disappointed in y'all, so very disappointed. At this at this point now, me and Liz, we both crying. We Aww. both sad because, you know, so we didn't talk for like a couple days after that. Even we both crying, whatever, sitting there with each other. We didn't talk for like a couple days. We get suspended. We go back to school. We still didn't talk. Probably maybe, we didn't talk for maybe like a month. Then we had a project at school. My teacher, her name was Ms. Lee. I love her so much. But she put us in the yeah, project. Group. We do the project together because I, I, feel like, I felt like she seen that we still was at odds with each other. So she made us project partners. So we had to work on this project together, and it had to be done outside of school. So I used to go to her house. She'd come to my house, and then we sat down. And she was like, I'm so sorry. I'll never let anybody come between us ever again, whatever. And I said the same thing to her. But I feel like for us to be that young and able to have a conversation like that, I'm like, this is going to be my lifetime friend. Yeah. And now she's Dream's godmom. Aww. She was only my only friend that came to the hospital when I had Dream. Yeah. Anything, like, I could call her right now. Like, we don't see each other that much, but I call her right now and tell her Dream needs something, I need something. She's going to do that. Every event that I've ever had. She show up to it. Yeah. Like, no question asked about it. I don't even have to. I just sent her the invitation. I know she coming. So I love stuff like that. No matter no matter what we go through, she show up me regardless of what she got going on in her own life, too. So I love that. That's that consistency I was talking yeah, about. Yeah. Like, she, she, and I think that's the longest friendship that I done had. So from third grade yeah. up to I've known now. her longer than I've known Dream Dad. Yeah. So, okay. With off topic. <laughs> Y'all started dating at 11? Did y'all meet at 11? We started dating at 11 um, in sixth grade. My cousin, her name is Dark Harry. She introduced me and Jaylee to each other. Okay. Yeah. Oh. That's crazy, right? Young love, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's really crazy. But, you know. And with the friendship thing, too, me and him have a friendship, like, outside of yeah. our relationship. It's, it's the friendship. We had to kind of rekindle that. I think we let the relationship get in the way of the friendship. And now that's something that me and him working on. I feel like we're both on a spiritual journey together, trying to better our minds, yeah. to be a better parent to our daughter. Like, so that's something positive that's going on in my life right now. It's going really well, actually. I'm shocked. but Are you really? I mean, if that's your soulmate, I feel like, look, y'all might go and have these riffs, but it's like, them riffs gonna always. That's something you know that what I'm I, that's something that I did not understand at first. When we first, um, okay, after we we was going through things before I had dream, but it, and I'm gonna say this: I was a little ass girl. I was not a woman. I was a little ass girl, and I felt like he was forced to be a man because he took on the responsibility of taking care of me. Yeah. After I graduated high school, we moved in with each other. So it was it was no we gonna live our own life. No. He paid all the bills, like he dead ass. I had a job, but I used my money for whatever I wanted to use it for. And I didn't realize that that put so much stress on him that yeah. that sent him into like a state of depression. And I didn't realize, like that shit made me feel so bad that I don't talk about it, but I did not realize that. So I feel like he turned into a man before I was able to turn into a woman. We had dream, you know, your motherly instincts, they kick in like that. We mm. women, I feel like that's embodied in everybody. Yeah. So it's like, okay, he's still paying all the bills. I don't work. I'm a stay-at-home mom. That's when I started my last business. But he pay all the bills. But I was um, also the type of girlfriend. I cooked. I cleaned. You know, whatever my man need, I did that for him. Right. But with shit being so high, that still wasn't enough for him. And I cannot be like, well, I did X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. Now that, I, that I'm financially responsible for everything in my life now because I cut that part of him off in yeah. my life, it's like, that's a strong man because... Because it's a lot. You taking care of me, your kid. Like, you going to work every day. You know, you come home and you might get into it because I'm bitching because I'm tired, whatever. But you tired too. Yeah. And I'm not taking that into consideration. Like, you probably had a badass day at work. You come home. And I'm bitching about something. You get what I'm saying? Like that's some enlightenment right there. I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to just sometimes like calm down. Yeah. Like calm down. And when I used to go to him about stuff, I'm not coming off as you know, hey babe. Mm -hmm." It's like, bro, what the like, like just very aggressive, very mean. It it was just horrible, and it took for us to break up. When I moved out of our house, we was living in a house together. 
I moved out of our house and got my own house. Yeah. And now in the house, it's just me and Dream. This is when we took our break, breakup, whatever. It was just me and Dream. So I'm responsible. I got to pay rent, utilities. Got to get my baby to and for, uh, to and from my grandma's house for her to keep her while I go to work. On top of that, I got to go to work. Working every day. Mm-hmm. Me and him still going through the motions or whatever, whatever. He, he had started staying there a little bit with us. But me and him still was back and forth, bickering, bickering, bickering. And one night we had got into it. He was asleep on the couch. I had been at work all day, came home, had a dream all day. She just, this is one of the days she was on 10. He sleep laying down on the couch. Granted, I was I was so wrong for approaching him the way that I did. But he's like stretched out on the couch. So I like, I'm like, Jalen, he, he sleep hard. I'm like, Jalen, get up. He moved. I said, Jalen, he didn't move. I was like, bro, like. I push him, bruh. And you know when you sleep and somebody, like, wake you up out of your sleep like yeah. that, you like, he's like, bruh, what the fuck wrong? Like, yeah. wait. Like, I'm like, school over. He like, why are you being so mean right now? What is wrong with you? And I'm like, I'm not being mean, like, but this, I'm frustrated at yeah. this point. So I'm not looking at it how he would be looking at it. And I don't think he was looking at it how I was looking at it, too, until we talked about it. I'm like, you know, I'm stressed out. Like, you don't, you're supposed to be up with Dream right now, whatever, whatever. Because he didn't have to go to work the next day, mm-hmm. but I did. And he like, all you had to do was just tell me to get up to get her. I would get her. Like, there's no problem with that, whatever. We get into it really bad. I tell him, get the fuck out of my house at this point. And I'm like, if I'm going to be doing this shit by myself, get out. But I took it to the extreme because technically I was not doing it by myself. Yeah. But I'm so in my feelings. And I was going through postpartum still, too. I was so in my feelings and being such a bitch. I'm like, but it just really took this year for me to realize where we went wrong in that situation. Then after that, he left, whatever. That's when we went our separate ways. He started dealing with other people. I started dealing with other people. And us dealing with other people, too, made us realize, like... Like, y'all... y'all like, we don't yeah. built this. We don't... We really built this. So, involving other people, it just... It was not the best thing. I mean, it was the best thing because we got to experience and see how other people were. Right. But we, like, hmm, we kind of done traumatized each other, too, <laughs> with other people. So, now that's something that we're working on right now. But I used to be in my feelings about him dealing with other women, but I look at it like... He had to experience and deal with these other women for him to see that. I ain't trying to be cocky, but there's no, no other woman like me, and there's no nobody knows you like I, we practically raised each other. Yeah, we y'all grew up together. Raised each other. Yeah, so it's like we going through the motions of life together. We both trying to figure out our own life, all while still trying to deal with each other, and be parents. Be be parents to our kids. It's like it becomes a lot. It sometimes it can be overwhelming, and it's some days where I be like, you know what, fuck this shit. I'm- <laughs> I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood, but, you know. And I think of my daughter, too. I'm like, I'm strong on the two-parent household thing. Yeah. But it needs to be healthy. And that that was one of my motives, too, for us breaking up. I'm like, this yelling and this bigger, and with her being autistic, you know, autistic kids, loud noises and anything, it drives them insane. So I'm like, this yelling, this, I'm like, this, this it not ain't good. Work. This not working. It's not working out for me. I don't, I don't know. But I think, but I could sense that he was unhappy, too. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just be the bigger person, and we gonna call this off. This is irritating me. Okay. Oh, I thought it was a spider. It, it, lo- it looked like a spider. But I was like, we just gonna call this off, and then I prayed about it, and I'm like, God, if this is meant to be, he'll find his way back. Yeah. If it's not, what do what you gotta do? Yeah. So, I feel like it's it was important for y'all to make that separation. I can't. I will say I kind of went through that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it turned out way different, but it's like, how do I say it? Like, I just feel like with my ex and when he went through his trials and tribulations with another woman, Mm -hmm. it made me open my eyes, like, to a lot of things. Like, you sure, you, you didn't know what you needed, and you took me for granted a lot. Yeah. And for me to be as loyal and very... I'm here for you. I, I understand you. I'm willing to communicate with you. I think, I don't want to say it like this, but I have a lot of great qualities about me that you probably weren't ready for. Mm-hmm. And when you weren't ready for it, it was like, I had to really let you go. You had to let me go. And now you in a whole nother situation that you feel is unfavorable. That's that's one thing that I was saying about me and Jalen too. I'm yeah. like, you know, it ain't. I ain't gonna say it's the relationship. It's 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 us. Mm-hmm. You could go. You could go be with a hundred different other women. If you're not getting right with yourself, that's it's not gonna work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. 
that's it was like that with me with men too. Like if I'm not right with myself, it ain't gonna it's work. It's never with gonna work because I'm always feel some way inside. And it's like it it took two different people maturing and growing up for real and looking at each other like, Okay, I see that you are nothing like the people I've dealt with. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like you can get a more of an appreciation for a person when y'all do separate, even though it, it could be the most painful thing. It definitely did. It made me value him yeah. a lot more. Yeah. It made me value him a lot more. And us taking that break and me dealing with other men, those men traumatized me. Honey, they're trash. Trauma, traumatized. <laughs> like, <laughs> they traumatized me so bad. And it's like, it's nothing out here but trash garbage why would i why would i get into something new and deal with new baggage when i could just go back to what i was dealing with and make it work and work on that and fix that especially with a man that's willing to do that with me right a lot of these men they don't be want to go through nothing everything with them be so one-sided like speak on it their mind they head space and they be wanting you to be x y and z and they ain't got a pot to piss in like I'm not doing it. And then on, dating with a kid is hard, too. Because I'm the type of mom, I don't bring my, I don't bring my daughter around men. Because they, 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 they creepy. So, uh, I'm not going to say all y'all, but a lot of y'all. Majority of them? Yeah. Weirdos. I just hear too many stories. And it could be it could be the, the cousin, the daddy, the brother. Like, And I'm just, especially having a little girl. And I'm not saying, like, having a little girl over a little boy. Because, I mean, boys they do get. They do to boys, too. It, it, I guess just having a child, period. Like, you always want to protect them. You, like You have to be on guard with that. Like, and it, it was this one dude that I was talking to or whatever, and one time he was like, um, where my daughter at? See, no, like, don't play. <laughs> she got like, a daddy. <laughs> I was like, who you talking to? <laughs> what you talking about? And that's what I, I was like, she got mm-hmm. a daddy. I was like, don't, I was like, don't say that. That that don't one turned me off so it did. bad. And it made me look at him weird. Like, I don't know what it was. It made me look at him weird, and then after that, he did end up doing something to me that was crazy. Like, yes. Mm. So I'm like, that was God telling me, yeah, get him up out of there. Yeah. Like, I, I think I had to be the example so he wouldn't be able to get Ugh. to my kid. Because I, I, I was going to kill him. Like, you, you were going to have to die. Mm. And I hate that for you. I hate that for me, too, because I don't want to go to jail, but you was going to have to die. Me. But it's like God presented the weirdo to me. He, this and, man is weird, and you need to get away from him. And it's been so many times where God was like, stop talking to him. Stop talking to him. He's giving you warnings and stuff, Stop talking right? to him, and I just kept going back, going back. And I kept saying to myself, I even expressed a dream that one time. I'm like, I don't know. He scares me. Like, he, he's starting to scare me. And I told him that. I, I was like, I feel like he's trying to make me his baby mama or something. Like, it's just... He always want to talk about kids, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Somebody don't fall right. into the trap. Don't like that. And he, and that was one, of, and he's one of those men that sat on me for years. You know, I was with Dream Dad, whatever, for all them years. He sat on me for years, waiting on it. As soon as he seen the opportunity that opportunity that me and Jalen was not together, and I fell for it like a dummy. I fell for it like a dummy. But that's exactly what I say. Do not talk to these niggas. They've been waiting on you for 11 years. Bro. They're going to ruin your life. <laughs> They're going to traumatize you. He traumatized me. It's like, because you hate you hate to even admit that things had to happen. But you, like, somewhere in your path, you had to see that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had to go through that so you can be like, oh, now I know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, even, even through the good and the bad things that be happening in life, I just be like, you know what? I'm glad that it happened in the way that it did, and it wasn't worse. I'm the type of, I don't live with regret. Yeah. I don't live with regret. I, so when shit be happening, it be bad, I be like, but I just let everything be a lesson learned because I, you know, it, it has to go this way for your life to work out the way that it's supposed to. Yeah, and if you resist it, it's like, I don't know, it, something's going to, either something's going to kick you back to make sure that you learn that lesson that you're trying <clears> to <throat> avoid because at one point, I'm like, am I cursed? Like, why is everything in my life keep going to shit? Am I cursed? But it's just that I wasn't listening to God. Matter of fact, you said something about this earlier. You mm-hmm. said, you was like, am I the problem? Can we get into that? Yeah. Why do you, what, what is going on that you feel like you are the problem in your friendships? Or is it in somewhere else? Mm. Oh, how can I put this without, like, being too specific? Okay. Uh, okay, so... 
situation like with my friend, like I had told you, she do things. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, it, it made me get her to side. A lot of shit that she has done, it made made me get her to side. I like, like, are you really my friend? Type yeah. Shit? But I seen how like she was raised, her relationship with her parents and things like that. I didn't know that at first. Like when we first became friends, I didn't know all of this was going on. So I'm like. But I love her so much. I yeah. love her. Like, she do so many things to me that piss me off so bad, but I love her so much. And I feel like God placed me in her life for, for me reason. to be yeah. there to help her regardless of, like, and then sometimes she do so to me, and she don't realize, like, oh, that was kind of fucked up. I shouldn't have did that. But like I said, it's, I feel like it's how she was raised. I feel like she's never had real genuine friends like mm-hmm. me. Like, the other day she called me and was like, because she been doing shit that I didn't approve of. And she called me and she was like, Go ahead and give it to me, because I know you finna, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, you know what? I ain't going to even do that with you today. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what I think you should be doing and areas in your life that you can improve in. It's your decision. You take what you want to do with that, but it's your decision. But I just feel like I can't give up on her. Yeah. I feel like she don't have nobody else, and I feel like I cannot give up on her. I just cannot leave her. Like, she hang out with people that I know for a fact is not her friend. But that's her journey. She going to have to see that, you know? So I'm just like... But do y'all talk about it? Yeah, but it's like it's like I can't get through to her almost. Mm. You know, it's like, I'm just like talking to a brick wall sometimes. <laughs> or like you yeah. talk to a little kid and they just like, whoop de doo like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck going on. But I don't know. And my mom done be like, mm-mm, um, mm-mm. stop being friends with her, whatever, you whatever. It. Thank you. You're welcome. But I, everybody just always tell me, stop being friends with her. But... Something in me, I just, I say I this. can't. Do you feel strong enough to carry both of y'all loads? Yeah. Then you I feel keep like doing I what you're doing. I feel like I can hold that space for her. I feel like I that space for her, yeah. Now, if I couldn't, then I would have been cut off. But I feel like I've evolved so much and grown so much over these past few months. I feel like I could hold that space for her. And then on top of her being a mom, we both had daughters, so yeah. I'm like, you know, me being a mama, everybody needs somebody. somebody. Yeah. Uh, and heavy. she she had she got people, but she ain't really not like you. Yeah. I get it. So, you know, and anything she need me to do for her, I'm gonna do it. Regardless of if it inconveniences me or not. Because I know that she needs that help. So it's like it's almost like she my my kid and I love her, but this my this my homegirl, but you know, yeah. I love her so very much though. Over the few months that we have been friends, I love her so very much. I'll do anything for her. I just want her to get her self together i want her to see that she's more worthy of the shit that she is so oh a word oh okay definitely. <laughs> definitely. A word. definitely dang so okay what how do i say how do, does she reciprocate the things that you need in a friend to you though or as in like like, when you need something, like, not need something materialistically, but, like, she's there for you and everything. Like Yeah, I could go. I she has the qualities that you need. And that's the thing about her. She has so much common sense and the advice that she give, she don't take it. It's like you know better, but you choose not to oh. do better. And that's why I said that I won't give up on her because I know that she know. Yeah. But she got to apply herself. She don't apply herself. I, don't I think when people do that, either they got comfortable or they're scared. She's, I feel like she's scared, and I feel like she's traumatized. Yeah. I feel like she try to put on this facade, like, oh, I'm this big, bad, but when really you're just a mushy little baby. <laughs> you're just a mushy <laughs> little baby, and and I try to present that space to my friends to let them know this is a safe, like it's safe okay. space for you. It's okay for you to break down, cry, talk about whatever you need to talk about, like, Cause I some of the stuff that she done told me that she done been through like with yeah. with her um daughter's dad, her parents and things like that. It's just it it would make you sick to your stomach, and I just that's why I won't give up on her. Yeah. Cause it's like people, if I feel like people around her give up on her or they don't have any hope in her, any hope for her because she constantly do the same things over and over again. But like we said earlier. You going you gotta keep going through that in order for you to get, get yeah. the lesson. Like you gonna have to keep regardless of God make you go through it a hundred times. Like it's literally it's the same thing in when people date men and they like, I thought I chose a good one this time. But he's the same thing as the last one because you never learned the lesson. You gotta step outside of yourself. You and have start eat. taking a look around you. Yeah. You because you're gonna you're gonna keep meeting that same man in a different body because 
you didn't get it the first time. You didn't get it the first time, yeah. And in order That's to crazy move you say on, that because she um she had said something like that to me the other day, <laughs> and she just like oh, she like I don't know. She like is it me? I said yeah yeah it's you friend i'm sorry it's you though i'm i'm and i was saying to her i'm not saying that the terrible things that they do to you is your fault right but it's some kind of trauma somewhere in you that you have to work that you need to work on for you to stop attracting Mm -hmm. these kind of people because i just went through that myself yeah with the men i had to look it get yeah 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 it's it's a lot but i'm glad herself too much to people that don't deserve it Oh, but I think that circles around to she doesn't want she wants somebody to be there for her. I think and she, she has wants abandonment to be, issues too. Yeah, yeah, yeah relate all too well. <laughs> I do. Like it's it's times where I I know I know something not good for me, and I just keep going back because they keep opening their arms. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like the availability of it all would be like. Well, at least this person is there for me, so maybe it is meant to be, or maybe it is supposed to be this way. And then it's like, Taisha, I you have to stop. You have to stop dealing with things and people that make you go against yourself. Yeah, but you got to know yourself to do that. You do, and a lot of people don't know themselves. They don't take the time. And I was one of those people. It's a self awareness game. But me, I'm very self aware. I'm not dealing with anything that's gonna make me go against myself. And I used to be like, just try to keep things on the hush now. If something bothers me, you're gonna know. Oh, so you're not gonna bite your tongue. Like you're gonna know <laughs> that it, you're gonna know that it bothers me. Like and and it's like something in me. Like it won't rest. I cannot let it rest. Just like um the other day, whatever me and Dream Dad took the pictures or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, you didn't repost the pictures. Why you didn't repost the pictures? He was like, oh, I didn't. I wasn't thinking about it like that. I was like, oh, okay, it's cool. I really was pissed off. Yeah. But I was trying to calm down to just, you know, so we could have a better conversation. But he texted me. He was like, I'm sorry, you know, I'll go repost the pictures. Like, I don't want you to be mad or something. He was like, I don't want you to think there's nothing fishy going on or whatever. I'm like, nah. Uh, that's what I was thinking. But I'm playing it cool. Like, <laughs> no, nah, it ain't that. It ain't that. And then I told him, I'm like, I don't want you to go repost the pictures because I said something. I wanted you to do it because you wanted to do it. But he's I'm not a social you... media guy like that. I'm so glad that you just said that. that... <laughs> line i was literally at work and i told somebody i was like um we was talking about like why men do the things that they do and i was like it, it's obviously the the flower situation i don't care for flowers at all i, I swear yeah. I don't. it was like when a woman says like oh i would like flowers I would, da, 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 da. can you get me flowers it changes the dynamic of you doing it because you want to because see you, me a certain way wants them. You ain't doing it because you want to. You want to do something nice for her. You're doing that because she literally asked yeah. you for this shit. Like, and a lot of men don't get sound that. Sound ungrateful, but it don't mean as much. It, it don't. Now that you don't got me these flowers because I asked you for them. <laughs> and me, I'm the type of lover. Well, lo- lover and friend. Yeah. I observe all my people. Yeah. So I pay attention to shit they like and stuff like. Jalen could see something. He'd be like, "Oh, I like this." Be like, "Noted, noted, <laughs> noted." You might, you might not get it right now, but it's noted. I remember. I remember. So you know, because it, it shows a whole nother side. Like I care about you. Like that friend, that friend in me for my partner or my friend. I am going to keep showing up for you. I'm you, like that with my with my family too. Like with my mom. Yeah. Like I told you earlier about her. Whatever, whatever <laughs> she be going through. Like I don't get too deep in that with her unless she wants to talk. But yeah. If I suspect that she's having a bad day or some she's just not going right in her life, she love flowers. Love flowers. And it's so simple flowers to get. Flowers seven dollars. It's so simple. Just do I'm it. I'm gonna go to Kroger and get my mom some flowers and get her a little card from Dollar Tree and write her a note to let her know that you're not in this alone. That's like, sweet. You might not want to talk about it right now, but you know. Oh. Yeah, I do. I do stuff like that for my mom because really, my mom is one of those type of women where <laughs> I don't need nobody for nothing. I don't need nobody no, right. for nothing. So she carry everything on her back. I know that's a heavy load for a woman to carry everything on. Then, like, you got your kids, your grandkids. My grandma lived with us. Yeah. So I know that could become a heavy burden for her. So whatever I can to try to make her mental better, and sometimes financially too, but she also one of the moms that's like, you're not paying no bills. Yeah. You my kid. You my responsibility, no matter how grown I am. So I just try to do what I can to make her feel better because in order for her to be in her best mental state 
and everything in our house to operate right, she got to be in the right headspace. So everything in the house just go to <laughs> shit. <laughs> and I cannot operate out of chaos. Man, what? I can't. I can't do it. But no, that's a, that's a great quality. That's a great daughter move right there. <laughs> I'm going to have to take a page out of your book. Yes. Put it in my back pocket. <laughs> I'm sentimental, <laughs> too. You say you sentimental? You you a bit softy, ain't it? <laughs> I am. That's why I want everybody like, you so mean, like, you know, I'm a cancer. Just yeah. like the crab. Hard on the outside. Soft and soft and mushy on. That's me. Like that's just like my per, my protect protective shell almost. That is so crazy. Like, okay, even with zodiacs, like, don't you find it so interesting how we go about it? Like, do you think before you knew like what a cancer actually was like do you think you were already that way like predestined because i be thinking yes. i'm like i don't know if i was this way anyway or is it that i read scorpios are mysterious scorpios are like this they are have a scorpio a, i am i love that <laughs> i love scorpios i love scorpios yeah my favorite cousin is a scorpio i'm sorry clarence oh but money Poo, my cousin money Poo, she's a scorpio like i love her yeah, I, I know Winnie. Her. I know, I know her. She's very, she's very wise. She has this sex appeal to her. Like she's not, she don't overly show her body and things, but it's just like her aura, like her. That's a beautiful woman. Yeah, and she's my older cousin. I think she's like twenty nine, but I look up to her. You know, she, that's a woman. <laughs> that's a woman. Say so that's what a woman looks that's like. That's a woman right there. She is. She's very independent. She's very smart. She's beautiful. Like. I look up to her so much, and I get a lot of, like, when I be going through stuff in, my, yeah. in life and I need advice, that's who I go to. She don't never tell me nothing wrong. Maybe that's when you need to hear what you need to hear. That's who you go talk to. She not going That is. I, I look at people and their relationships, like, with their family. I have a huge family. Me I am too. close to no one. Like, I'm not. Really? Really. Like, I try at times, but it don't work. It's like, I'll show up, they won't show up, or it, it's like, I'm, I guess that's just me. Or if they do text me, it's out of something that they need from me. Mm. And it's never mm. to really check on me unless it's, uh, un, like, it's undermined. Like, oh, how, how is your condition? But can I borrow $20? You know what I'm saying? So it's like a setup. I like lock the shit. <laughs> I was about, but I get that. I don't, I don't, that's why I really, I... How do I say? I'm not really sentimental towards people in my family unless they're in my household. So like your mom and your dad and your brothers. Okay. Because but they I know they're gonna do whatever for me. Yeah. They they gonna make sure I'm okay. If something is happening to me, it's immediate. There is never a time where I gotta worry about, oh, is my brother gonna help me out if I need help? Do you have cousins close in the angel I mean yeah. the age ranges you? Yes. And they all live around here. <laughs> That's they, what's so crazy because a lot of people do tell, like, you know, you've, you've been around me, Clarence and Caitlin, them before. So a lot of people always be like, y'all got the best relationship, best dynamic, whatever. Yeah. How, it's like that. However, we all bicker, argue, fight. Like, we do that. But we love each other so much that with us, anything could be talked about. It's never gotten to the point where it's gotten physical. It's just like, yeah. oh, I'm not fucking with you no more. We always, even if the conversations are difficult, but even if the conversations are difficult, we have them. Yeah. We will sit down at Money Poo House at that square table, and we could be yelling to the top of our lawns at each other. Yeah. But I bet you we're not going to leave that house at odds still. That's what's up. No, that's strong. That's that's what people, like, strive to have because it's, like, that's a, it's. It's rare. You don't see that. You don't You don't really see that. And I know a lot of people that do not fuck with their cousins. They like, don't fuck with their family like that. We try. Yeah. It just, it don't ever work out. But for that, too, I feel like sometimes that's better for some people because family members, they can be very toxic. And you got to cut them off. Mm-hmm. In order for you to prosper, you got to cut them the fuck off. And I hate to say it. No, I don't. <laughs> but I, I don't get attached to people for that but one I don't like to get attached to people because I don't like the feeling of when it's taken away from me because of my my issues your chest like and your stomach that's where you feel it at it, it it's hurt it hurt it's hurtful like yeah. when I got close to I want to say two of my friendship stories I had a friend that I lost in high school I had a friend I lost in college 
And when I tell you, I call, I'm going to talk about the most recent friendship loss or the friendship breakup, rather. Okay. So we had got into odds because of a accident. We had got in a car accident and finances were at topic or whatever. Mm, so money. she ended up calling me money hungry. Right. Okay, I'm going to just listen to the story before I give my opinion. And the thing about it was I was not driving. I'm the one who got hit because she took a left turn and I was trying to tell her, like, don't go, don't go. She on the phone, like, get off the phone. Don't go. You're going. I'm like, came, T-bone us, we spent, we spent. I'm in the hospital. Like, <laughs> you know she what I'm didn't saying? Get hurt. Not as bad as I did. <laughs> like, I had to get on painkillers and all that stuff. I'm like, we had to get a little, what, a little CT scan and everything. Like, I could barely move my body. But now, mind you, this girl, we don't, we done met each other middle school. So we, we're in college, yeah. you know? And I've so been friends for a long time. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, basically, more to speed up, she say, okay, I'm going to take care of the finances from the hospital. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we wait. Let me let me let me stop you right here okay. before before you go. Okay, you just said that sh- sh- she was gonna take care of the finances, whatever. Mm-hmm. Y'all in the car. Mm-hmm. You telling her, do from what you telling her, don't turn. Mm-hmm. Cause two, I see the I see the I see the car coming. Yes, and and you on and she's on her phone mm-hmm. with her sister. Thank God that you and her survive because what ha- what if the situation had turned out completely different? Right, and I, and you were the one that got hit. You could have died. Yes. Now she was going to go to jail. You're not getting your life back. Your parents don't lost their kid. And you now talk about my, my stuff is on your, on your conscience, and I know it would have been because we was that close. And whoever her parents is, they finna try to get this bond money to get her out of jail for murder because they're going to charge you with murder because you're on your phone. You're on your phone. And I'm like, bro, the police across the street because I'm like – just to read, like, I don't I don't talk about this often. I talk about it enough because at one point she didn't want to talk about it. And I was like, you do realize that a lot of this stuff happened because you wouldn't listen. She don't take accountability. It was it was a lot. It was a lot. It, right now, I guess it's been, man, was that, was that 19 too? Or was that 20? I know it happened in June. I think it was like June seventh. I think it happened. I can't remember or something like that. But wherever it happened, it had to be the nineteen. I think I had that was that was a busy year. I was gonna say twenty nineteen was trying to take you out of here, bro. It was hard, man. Ah, I would have been in, in an insane. It, it was twenty. It, I, <laughs> I want to say it was twenty twenty because I'm trying to think about um, where we were headed, and I met some somebody. And I'm trying to think of that, but yeah, it was a lot. It was tough. It was that was definitely twenty. So y'all stopped being friends back then. We stopped being friends because after she she said all of that stuff about me, like, cause I'm just trying to see like, why are you talking about buying Crocs and stuff on Instagram, but you're not talking about when we we can get this solved? Like, did she have insurance? I yeah. It, the insurance, oh girl, that's a whole nother story. I was gonna say, it's, I had this so like, accident was her fault. I mean, yes, but you still could have got paid from that. From I ain't get insurance. If anything, I spent so much money on that accident, it's not even funny. I don't know if it was something I didn't do or if something just got mixed up. Insurance was given the run around. I'm in school. Girl, it was. I'm like, by I got myself. No problem it's so, it's, 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 it was so much, and I'm just like, bro. <sighs> but the main thing about that story was when we was breaking up. That's crazy. I called one of my friends from fourth grade. Now she been my friend since fourth grade, literally. So I'm like, bro, I am walking from class, mind you. That's like a ten minute walk from the class. To my dorm, I am bawling my eyes out, crying, hysterical, and I'm like, I can't believe she's saying this stuff about me. Like, is this how you actually feel about me? Like, after like the things that we talk about, the things that we do for each other, and you calling me money hungry over something that you said you was gonna take care of. 
And it wouldn't have bothered me as much if you wasn't posting about everything that you buying. What is going on? Like, you are so strong because I, I feel like with that situation, God got her up out of there. It was a lot. You don't need them type of people. You don't need them type of people around you. For one, not only is she not showing you sympathy because that was her fault, but you, you're bashing me like. We've never even. I don't think we even wrong. talked about it. I don't even think we ever even like sat down and talked about it. Cause I, I was like, do you understand what happened? And then she'd be like, it was a traumatizing time, and she doesn't want to talk about it and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, of course it was traumatizing. Like you, you could have lost me. You don't want to <laughs> talk about it, but it needs to be talked about. Yeah. And people, people, I don't. I don't deal with people like that. People, they be like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, you don't want to talk about it? We have nothing else to talk about. Yeah. I am not the type of person that let somebody do something, throw it on the road, we move forward like nothing. I can't. I it, was a lot, it was a lot to deal with. Once she's in there, we got to talk about this because she's dead ass, she's dead ass wrong. Yeah. She's dead ass wrong. Like, you could have literally lost your fucking life. Oh, I, I made sure that was said. Cause this, it was times I was like, bro, like, I don't like to say it now, but I did say it. I'm gonna own up to it, and also I was like, I wish he would have took me that night, cause so every, you could see, so you could see what you. Cause it's a lot of stuff I had to go through after that. Cause I'm like, bro, but I'm money hungry. I deserve every pen, every dime, bro. I when I Zizi, I spent so much money on that accident. You don't even would've, understand. You don't I would have turned understand. her ass every which way but loose. Do you hear me? <laughs> Bruh. Thank God for her. It, 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 it was so much. I would have told her up. <laughs> it was so much. It was so much. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. Like, it was like <sighs> dealing with all these friendship breakups. I done broke up with her. The other friend. Like, now, now, the thing about me is not that I'm forgiving, but I see people and I know what kind of people she had in her ear mm-hmm. at the time. And I'm like, I know this is not you saying this. I know you. One thing I about know me, you. I know somebody said that to can't you. Can't nobody tell me nothing about my friends. Nobody can tell me nothing about my friends. Yeah. Y'all, I don't even give people a safe space to. Don't say nothing about my friends, because if you get the yapping running your mouth, I have to go back and tell them what you said. I'm just not. I'm not that type of friend. So I make it very known that don't talk about my friends. You disrespected them. You're disrespecting me. Do not talk about my friends. Have you feel feel about them? Go, go to, to them. Go yeah, go to them and go talk to God about it. <laughs> yeah. But don't feel like I just feel like if people are comfortable with discussing your friends in front of you, you're not as solid as you saying you are. Yeah. Because why do they feel comfortable enough to talk shit about me around you? They shouldn't even feel. They should know like oh, never. There is there, like there is never like if somebody was to come up to me and be like, oh well, then yell that. No, Cause well, dead that right now because no. My first instant, are you crazy? <laughs> like, do you like, do you know who I am? <laughs> are you crazy? Nobody can't say nothing to me about none of my. I don't let my friends talk about my other friends. To me, none of that. Yeah, cause that's that's messy, girl. And then on messy. account of that, on account of that, we had a a shared friend. None of us are friends no more. And not that. Not, if you look at the text messages, I've tried. I've tried to rekindle. I've tried to you repair. Can't do it by yourself though. Yeah, damn right. It gotta be a team effort. <laughs> that shit, like, you would think that we just didn't even know each other or that none of us matter to each other. Because after, after I graduated, I done invited these people to my graduation parties. I done tried to meet up um, and try to talk about, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, there, I will say, there was a friend that I did rekindle with something earlier this year. And we, cause we had stopped talking since the diagnosis, cause this the one that I was telling you about earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, the way but that. But she was open and willing to have a conversation. With and she, you. she did. Now I will say need. she did apologize to me years ago. That's even but better. But at, at the time, I didn't want to talk about how she had made me feel because I didn't know if I wanted to rekindle that with her. Yeah. But now we're getting to a place where we live closer to each other now. We're gonna actually go uh, to a few functions together, and we're gonna see like, is our friendship worth saving, or do we just need to leave it? Worth need saving? to leave it at that, yeah. But I feel like a lot of I feel like a lot of relationships can be saved with a conversation. With a so simple. conversations, people are, it's like people be afraid of the, of the wrong com- like y'all y'all be down ready to fight whatever da 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 da, 
But when it's time to have a conversation, oh, I don't want to talk. Because you don't want to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, like, no. I'm already uncomfortable. Like, I'm already, yeah, and that's the type of thing, that's the type of things that make you. Like, that, it make you a better person. It make you a better person. Like, I'm, I've discovered that with my friendships this year, too. We got to have the difficult conversations, y'all. Yeah, because if we don't, oh, my God, I'm glad you said that. It's like we sugarcoating and sugarcoating around here, and that's fake. Yeah. Cause it's I don't gonna want get, nothing built off a lie. Because nothing is always going to be hunky-dory and uphill. Like, it's not. Or maybe downhill, because uphill is kind of a struggle. <laughs> but, <laughs> but everything yeah. is not going to be easy all the time. And, like, one of my closer friends, I would say he was a closer friend, I, I had got tired. And I was like, bro, like, when are we going to have these real conversations? And he's like, oh, well, we supposed to when we have a sit down. Well, when we do be together, we not talking about, about that. that. Yeah. And I keep on asking and I'm getting impatient. And now that I'm I'm getting more riled up and I'm trying to, you know, stay calm, you want to get an attitude and make it, try to flip it. This was a male? Yes. See, well, I, well, right here, this one is. I've this a whole nother. I've male friends. Well, in, in high school, I had my three male friends. It was Eric, Christian, and um, Jason. But... Christian, uh, uh, Christian, uh, what's Christian last oh name? Oh my lord, Coleman. Coleman, yeah. I know Christian. Yeah, <laughs> Christian Coleman. But those were those were my oh, and Tayshawn. How could I forget about Tayshawn? <laughs> she said, How could I forget? But those were my male friends. Like, and then you know we got grown. We all went our separate ways, live yeah. our life. And I don't have male friends. I don't even know how to operate around a male friend. I I feel like that'd be weird sometimes. You know, I've tried. But they make like slick comments and I guess I just get lucky then. Yes, I don't know. A lot, of, a lot of women are like that though, and I, that's why I'm like, is it is it me? Like, do I give off? Am I too nice or do I give off like? Am I flirtatious? But a lot of people tell me that I could look at them a certain way and then make them. But it's just like I ain't. I'm not trying Girl. to do that. Girl, you ain't got to tell me about the looks. Like, like, it's in your eyes. Stop looking then. <laughs> like, like, I don't like you. Yeah, I would never in my life. Like, if it was you and me, the last two people on this earth, it still you, wouldn't you be wouldn't you. You wouldn't have no chance. It still Final. would not be you. I, it's funny because me and my friend Mo was talking about this. You touch me, bitch. Oh, <laughs> not the crocodile. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> but I try to keep it like that, but men are so. They can they can be weird sometimes. Not, well, I ain't talking about my friends. My friends, we... We establish a, a relationship of brother, cousin, real quick That's because what I'm, I'm not like I'm not trying to mislead you or misguide you into thinking that I like you. So I go ahead and set the standard. I set the tone, and I just be like I talk about other men and make sure they know like oh my type is the complete opposite it of them. Ain't true. It's yeah, not true. and I describe them to a T like oh yeah they this and that and this and that. And then they be like. Okay. <laughs> then when I, me. girl, and then if I start talking about what I really believe in, yeah, you're not gonna like me by the end of this, yeah. and that's the goal. Because okay. <laughs> these men, like, I don't. Mm -mm. It just never works out for me. Never works out for me. That's that's me with females for most for the most part. And I want and I want to have a male friend so I can have that male perspective. Yeah. On things. Because it's like, I'm just lost in the sauce when it comes to men and trying to figure them out and shit like that. Like, women, I got that down pat. These men? They're simply... It's like rocket science. They, let me tell you something about men. Men are going to tell you exactly what they want you to know. I'm. If you feel like that man is saying something, he is. Because they, they're not going to overthink it to a we point. We overthink. To a point of... If he says something like, oh, me and my wife one day or something, you talking to him and you like, me and my wife one day, not me and you, not, he's saying exactly. You ain't his wife. You're not his wife. Oh, that's it. It's a stage thing. Girl, like you have to, that's all you got to do. You just got to listen to what they're saying because they're going to tell on themselves every single time. I wish a man would say, me and my wife. If he says, oh, okay. when I have kids. <laughs> Not when we, we have, have kids. kids. It's simple. He's telling. He's yeah. telling you. He'll tell you if he like you. Like I mean, is is it's so easy. And that's when wow, I just started listening. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. Next time you talk to a man, <laughs> just listen. That is. <laughs> mhm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And that that saved me a lot of heartbreak because it was a man I used to uh, talk to, and he would be like, oh, I'm dangerous, da 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 you shouldn't like me. Da. And he was, and, you know, I'm thinking he flirting. Like, he's just trying to be, you know, mysterious and blah. No. He did ask. He's telling mm-hmm. you exactly what you need to know. He's telling me. You don't need to like me. I don't need to be in it. Like, because I wanted to be in a relationship with this man. He didn't want to be in a relationship with me. I've been, I've been, oh. <laughs> he I've didn't want that. That's not what he wanted. That. I met this dude. He he was 32. Mm-hmm. He was 31 at the time, whatever. Met him at my job. And whatever, he he, he came to me. Like, I'm at work, minding my business, whatever, whatever. He came to me. Okay, cool. We text him back and forth, whatever, whatever, whatever. He's just saying little little things, whatever. I'm like kind of ignoring it. Then like on social media, he he hate from what he put on social media, he hates women. Bitches, this hoes that, fuck this. Listen fuck to that, how like, they talk. And I'm still like I ain't never had sex with this. Like still yeah. to this day, I've never done anything with him. But my my mom was so gone because of how beautiful beautiful gorgeous man he's gorgeous beautiful like he's so beautiful and he's successful yeah (laughs) but it really took for me to step step outside of myself and take a look at myself like i said am i the problem now when i see him post on social media i'd be like bitch shut up yeah like nobody wants you (laughs) that's why you're 31 32 and you ain't got no girlfriend like you got the money you got you got what's you the problem you're the problem you're the problem nobody wants you you got baby mamas. Then he got on social media one time like, oh, I don't like women with kids. I'm a woman with a child. I think that that right there, I think that was what did it for me. Because when it comes to my kid. Mm-mm. I don't understand people who date people with kids if you don't like kids or if you don't feel you want to raise these kids. Whole What's time, whole you got two girls pregnant at the same time. Ooh, not the hood twins. You said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's I didn't know. I didn't know this. I didn't know this at first it's until girl. like. <laughs> and what's so crazy? I knew one of the girls. She posted baby. <laughs> she posted baby on her Instagram one day. I'm like, I know this baby. I I I, I screenshot a picture of the baby. I sent it to my auntie. I'm like, am I am I tweaking? Like I'm tripping. She like, nah, that's the same baby. I still to this day have never said anything to him about it. I don't. T- I don't talk hilarious. to him anymore. Oh my god! Like I've never, and I've, and she, um, she said one time like on social media something about her. She's like, um, I hate my baby daddy or something. Something. I don't think she said I hate my baby daddy or something like that. And I gave her advice, and I'm like, you know, not knowing that it's not him, knowing, <laughs> not knowing that it's him that she's talking about. I'm like, you know, everything they they don't learn. They don't know how to be father as soon as the baby come out the cooch. Like, oh my lord. Not knowing, now I see why she hate the niggas. I see, that is crazy. I hate it for her that she got a baby by him. And you see, like, do you even see the, that set up? I'm telling you something about your baby daddy, and I didn't even know that was your baby daddy, because that's the man I'm talking, like, huh? What? Like, that's, that's insane. And had I known they fucked around with I would have never talked to him. Right. Never, ever talked to him. Because I like her. Funny. I like her. She's actually a cool girl. And then I found that out. I said, oh, hell no. Nah. He got to go. He still says they be sending reels and shit. Red. Red. Like, why what do you s- want? What do you want me to say? And it be a pointless shit. Like, kids waving or something. Like, pointless shit. Like, what you <laughs> think I'm going to tell you back to be like, hey. Like, what do you want me to say to this? No. Like, get out. <laughs> I'm going to block you. <laughs> Cause That's you getting on my nerves now. Yeah, like, getting on my nerves doing? because you think I'm gonna respond and be like, "Hey, I'm not." No, that is hilarious. I'm gonna let you know that straight up. That's funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> life be life in full circle moments. Be real, cause I'm like, what the fuck? Like, then you old as fuck. You nigga, you th- well, you're not old as fuck. Thirty is not old, but you're older than me. Yeah. I'm 24. Yeah, I mean, she the same age as me too. I think. <laughs> then that's what he's. Then he gonna tell me one time. Oh, I don't talk to younger girls. They tell you exactly who they are. They tell you exactly. They, I mean, nigga, you's a pedophile. And you know what's crazy <laughs> though? <laughs> like, what the fuck pedophile. you talking about? <laughs> we ain't laughing at me. <laughs> like, what are you talking about right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, be for real. When boy. did you meet her, <laughs> sir? <laughs> we ain't laughing about people. Being yeah, no, nah, we I'm not. Saying, like, Nigga was lying yeah. to my he don't talk to younger girls. You got a younger girl pregnant. So his other baby mama not young? I don't 
I don't know who the other baby okay. mama is. They okay. definitely hood twins, though. Dang. Definitely hood twins. They ain't that far apart. They not that far apart. Cause he posted he posted a picture with the other, with one kid. So I'm like, okay. Couple days later, he posts another picture. It's two kids. I text him. I'm like, these are kids. He said, yeah. I said, okay. Did he tell you that he had kids before you seen that? No, he had to have gotten pregnant when me and him first started talking. He had to have gotten pregnant when me and him first started talking. Because we started talking to each other in September around his birthday. Oh, my God. It was in September around his birthday. And I was like, "Mm -hmm." So he was talking to her at the same time. And then one time he was texting me. (laughs) Oh, he was texting me and I wasn't responding back to him because I was in a mood like, do you know he came to my job the next day with a girl? How old are we? Like, nigga, how old are are you? What are we doing? He came to my job the next day with a girl. I I guess he thought I was one of them girls that's like, oh, hell no. Some yeah, no. Nah. I simply still took their order. Get drinks, food, whatever. He pulled up. I was like, hey. Like, like I don't even know him. He was like, I'm finna cash. Like, he's standing in front of the girl. Like, I'm finna cash up you. He would do trick shit, like, send me money and things like that. He he finna pull off. He like, I'm finna cash up you. I said, okay. Oh, it's open. Because look. <laughs> What you want me to say? Are you saying you finna cash at me in front of her so she can know that me and you talking to each other? Like, I was just what like, What is okay. your motive here? What are you actually trying to do? And it's weird because you're being weird. You're old. You're too old to be acting like that. That's. And like, then it's I so it's so it. disrespectful because of the fact, like, okay, if you got this other girl, why do you have to feel like you got to use her to get to me or vice versa? I feel like he's a, I feel like he's a womanizer. I feel like it was me, the baby mama, the other baby mama. Because he's pretty. pretty. Yes. Like, he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. I give him that. That man is beautiful. Mm. But he, he ain't shit. It's calm. Bottom of my fucking shoe. That's crazy. That's insane. disgusting. Ugh. I spit on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And I really thank God that I dodged that bullet. Because I was getting I was getting out of fucked up situation. Just to because that was the he after me and um Jalen separated, that yeah. was the first man. That I talked to after that. That's the nasty taste left in your mouth. Yes, and it was like God was just not going to let me, no matter what, like any time we were supposed to see each other or whatever, it just never happened. And I seen him one time, and it was for like three minutes. And the vibe, I just was like, I don't know. I don't know. Like outside of outside of work, I seen him one time for like three minutes, and I just was like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm finna go. I got something to do. I ain't have shit to do. I was lying. It, hey, so and sometimes you got a lot to protect your sanity and your everything else. Something in me just was not feeling right <laughs> the about this, about me and him meeting up. So I just like I'm finna go. I'm Isn't finna that go. crazy though? How we get little signals and warnings? I never ignore my intuition. I never. I don't. I don't ignore my intuition before, and it led me to some bad situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Woman's <laughs> intuition is a motherfucker. If you're a woman and you ignore your intuition. You's a dummy, bitch. But <laughs> I think, I think. <laughs> no, that it's like you gotta listen to your intuition. Right? Maybe some like after <laughs> after you done felt it a couple times, because I don't know if you feel it like if you understand what you're feeling when you're feeling it for the first time. Okay, I get that. I so get that. I think maybe like you gotta go through a few little messed up situations to be like, you know what? I felt this before. This is that. And then you know how, like, men say, y'all women be in y'all head and y'all believe. Like, let's say we have a dream that a nigga cheating on us. If I have a dream, you cheating on me. You cheating. You cheating. And it never fails like it always get revealed. You're cheating. And I'm going to beat you up. (laughs) When I tell you they tell on themselves, though, like, a lot of times you probably see that they're acting different. And like you even to like, it. Yeah. Or you'll try to make it about yourself, like, oh, it's something that I'm doing that got him acting. No. That's it's something he him. doing. That's all on him. But what do I know? I'm single. You you know what you're talking about. Though. <laughs> you know what you're talking about. You I I, wa- about. I watch too much. I watch people too much, and I and I take in what they say. And I'm an overthinker. I'm gonna keep on scenarioing it out. I'm big. I'm very big on actions. Yeah. Like you know how people like word is bond. It is not. I gotta see what you're doing. I'm very. But big. people be living double lives. Double. Though. They do. They do. And that's they do. <laughs> now that when you but get into those situations, your that's intuition like, comes back into play with that. 
your intuition comes back into play with that. Like, if I if I if I had ignored my intuition with the situation with me and Dream Dad, we would not be in the place that we in today. Yeah. Like I really had to go in. I had to sit down with myself. I fast. I was working out, and when I did that. God laid everything out on the table for me. Everything that I needed to know, like stuff that I didn't even go looking for. Yeah. It's just like kind of fell in my lap. And I was like, oh shit, like this shit gets, it's kind of wicked. Like, bro, what am I finna do? Like, it that was that a way. heartbreak of eternity, but oh. I needed that. I needed that for me to be who I am today. Like, yeah. I wanna change. I wanna change shit. I wouldn't have changed it. Because that growth is so essential. And then it's like, it's just, our minds are so complex, and I don't think people really realize that at they times. Don't. And your mind is a very powerful thing. It the can most it can change. Thing that you can have. Yeah, it is. It is something that you need to have that you can't even see, and it's crazy. And what's so crazy about that? Sometimes I be more my mind to just like shut off. Shoot. Just like I, my thoughts, they just be going and going and going. And I just be wanting to shut off sometimes because. I'm a deep thinker. Yeah. I think about everything on a deeper level, like, than what it is. I I don't know. I can't help it either. And just like how you're telling me you don't sleep, I don't sleep because my mind never shut up. I you know, don't I've been sleep. for like, last, I've been up since five. A.M.? Mm-hmm. Whoa. I went to sleep 12. I just worked a 12-hour shift yesterday and the day before. I got off at seven. And you ain't went to sleep. It be like that. I can't even. I can't even be like. Oh, I got up washing clothes, <laughs> doing something. I was just like, I might as well. You can't put your. It's like you can't put your body to rest. Cause I feel like all that. I got time to rest later. Like I got so much I need to accomplish right now, mm -hmm. and I'm like, how am I gonna get there if I just if I just sit? Lay around. Cause there there are dark times what I have, and I don't want to do anything, mm -hmm. and I and I take that time, you know. You gotta and, know when your body going into overdrive. <sighs> You I'm have learning. to know when your body going in to overdrive. I'm learning that. My friends and my, I would say the people who pointed out to me the most is probably my mom. Mm -hmm. and yeah, she kind of loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all finna make me put these on. Hold on I got to see what, what we working with. But um, my mom and my friend, Danielle, they they the two that showed me the most. They'd be like, you're overworking yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but if I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything. If I don't make my to-do list or you if I don't... You beat yourself up about not accomplishing your goals for that day on... Mm -hmm. I'm like that too. Because I'm like, dang, I could have edited this. Like the other night I was I was just up on the weekend. I edited like three different videos. They all about an hour and a half long. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Whoa. And I was just going. I was like, oh, I got, I'm, I got it. I got it. I'm good. But when you in that mode, you in that mode. I'm like that, too. You got to take advantage of that because I don't like know when too. I'm going to fall again. Yes, because it'll be days, like, I could be going and going and going and going. And my mom notices this about me, too. If she go in my room and I'm in that bed and I'm, like, getting up and I'm she, she'll she come in there, like, let's say it could be for two days and she's seated on me in my room and I won't come out. And I won't. Yeah. She'll come in my room that third day, snatch them blinds open, snatch that cover <laughs> off. Get up. What's on the agenda for today? Get up. Get going. You're not finna sit in this bed. Yeah. And, sorrow and feel bad for yourself like go do something take dream to the park go do something anything but that she didn't used to do that but i guess now since i've been more open to her about my mental health or whatever she but that it really helped me because i'm like she she got a point i gotta i gotta do something i can't sit in here and feel bad for myself yeah like last night i felt myself getting in my feelings because of course i'm an entrepreneur but i want to move i'm on my own house like i'm ready to move and i've been applying to job after job after job after job and it's like like, in my notes, I got a goddamn scroll of jobs that I don't apply to. And I was like, I know I'm not. I know that I'm qualified for most of these jobs. And I'm like, am I slow? No. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Like, am I dumb? Last night, I, um, when Dream left with her dad, I got home. It's silence in there, so I can't do nothing but think. I'm crying at this point. I'm like, fuck, like, what am I going to do? And I just like, you know what? I'm going to give it to God. Yeah. I'm going to pray about it. Then I woke up this morning. I got a job. I'm like... Yes, I'm like, bro, like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. That was the first thing I seen when I opened my eyes this morning. When I checked my email, I was like, because I was about ready to be like, fuck that. Please shit. don't beat yourself up about these this job market. Bro, literally, that I seen on TikTok, they like uh, starting a price gauge and stuff like that. So they're, they would 
let go so many of their employees just to hire like people who are coming from college and stuff like they they just want to get in the field but they paying them way less so you know what i'm saying they don't know they worth and 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 because the economy is getting so bad they're trying to make sure that the people at the top can still get paid while the work is still getting done yeah so it's it's really not your fault or anybody you know what i'm saying it's sick that is sick it is that is just for so you to sick. just for you to keep money in your pocket while y'all out here making homelessness a crime is in, is insane. To I just me. seen I just seen um a police officer taking a homeless man to jail. Like what are we doing? Wait, he's <laughs> homeless. Homeless. Where the fuck is he gonna go? He don't have nowhere to go. Like he, y'all gonna take every ounce of dignity people got. I just feel like the world <laughs> is going to shit. At least and the this U.S. Be the only time that I tell people <laughs> to not have kids. It's so Where sad. right now? I wish I could ball dream up and put her back inside. <laughs> Let me just da- step you back. Not even in my, put her back in her daddy balls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my baby to grow up in an economy like this. It's so crazy. And I just beat myself down so much because I know that I am her foundation. Yeah. And I'm 25 now. I will be 25 in July. I have to set that in, I have to set things in place for her. Like I'm just learning about or what is called Roth IRAs and things like yeah. that. Savings and it's a lot. It is.